Here, you mangy squealer! <laughs> What are you doing down there? Robbing us blind, I'll bet you. I catch you around here again, I'll fix you. Neville? Don't put him anywhere near Neville. Well, I could put him next to Greta Sweeney. Brilliant mother. Do you think Greta will take her picture for the society page? Maybe. Miss mm -hmm. Lindsay's muffins, madam. Oh, yes, thank you, Bridget. Bridget, did you ring up the florist about the tree? Barring an act of God, it should be here this afternoon, madam. Thank you, Bridges. Patrick put the presents in the study. Good morning, dear. Where were you off to so early this morning? Can't a man have his secrets at Christmas? Daddy, did you hear? Freddie Bolton is coming to the party. Isn't that just grand? Oh, well, now, we're not having a horde of fraternity boys, are we, Francis? One is hardly a horde, dear. Good. Walter Churchfield and I have business to talk of. And I don't want a lot of that bula bula nonsense going on, you hear? <laughs> Daddy, you're so stuffy. Hey, would honestly, can't you put aside business for Christmas, at least? Not with a man like Churchfield. Besides, it's a father's task to provide, Francis. There's no time off for holidays. So... Where's Neville? Three sheets of the wind in a rowboat, I bet. You mean he's been out all night again? I'm afraid so, dear. Well, it's time I had a talk with that boy. Daddy, can I have the car this afternoon for some shopping? Mm. Shopping? Well, Patrick can drive you after he takes me to the club. Oh, I knew you'd say yes. Mm. Water, Haywood. That's what daughters are for. And sons? Oh, now, don't start, Francis. Haywood, it's Christmas. Can't you Neville please? is incorrigible. I said I'd talk to the boy, but I don't know what good it'll do. I'm not talking about Neville. Joe is not setting foot in this house. Christmas Eve, that's what. 
He can't do that. Yeah. I thought we had 60 days. Not anymore. Talk to the police chief. He's got his hand in this for sure. Well, I should get back in case there's any trouble. There's not going to be any trouble. Well, what about Joe Dutton over at the dispatch? He'll put those on the front page for sure. You leave that boy scout and his penny weekly to me. But Joe and his father have been at each other for years. The Duttons can't buy Chicklet's whole stay without the dispatch on its back. Listen, Donnelly. Nobody's going to hear about anything until I am good and ready to break the news. Haywood Dutton included. You mean he doesn't know we're throwing these people out? That's right. Haywood Dutton knows nothing. All he knows is that I'm the cop that fixes his kids' parking tickets. Comes to me for nickel and dime favors, and uh, when I come through, he tosses me a box of candy for the missus. Well, this time, good old Murphy's bucking for a little bit more than a pound of chocolate cherries. Kicking people out on a short notice is risky business. Why don't we just wait until their 60 days are up? Because, Donnelly, you don't win big by playing it safe. Now, Dutton's got a buyer, Mr. Walter Churchfield. There is a man of real power and influence in this community. <laughs> and Walter's got a deal going. But he's got a problem. He's got to roll this over before the end of the year to avoid the tax man. So Walter wants Fennel Street cleared pronto. And he doesn't want Hayward Dunham to get points. So Walter Churchfield's the one who wants everybody out. But what about Joe Dutton and the dispatch? If he suggests his father is leaving people homeless, he won't sit still for anybody getting away with it. Relax, Donnelly. The Dutton feud is just the smokescreen we need to get away with this. The more Joe thinks his father's a villain, the less time he's got to go snooping around. I hope you're right. I know I'm right. In the next 60 days, Donnelly, you could be working for Port City's new commissioner of police. Batches? Donnelly, get rid of her. Run along, little girl. Matches, 50 to a box. Strike anywhere. Go home, kid. I don't have one. Donnelly. Take this lying down, Dave. Tell Joe we're counting on him. There's a meeting at the store in half an hour. The pot's boiling, son. You tell Joe Duck he can come to the meeting or he can side with that rich father of his. It's up to him. Calm down, Kennedy. This isn't County Cork. Enter in Fennel Street come Monday. And you'll take care of Haywood Dutton. With pleasure, sir. And, uh, uh Walter, I decided to accept your kind offer. Let's make a nice present for the wife this Christmas. Merry Christmas, Murphy.
No money, no chocolate, huh? You want Charity to go see a priest? cup of cocoa. I hate to drink alone. Sure, thanks. One coffee, straight, and one cocoa. Alexander. This is a push guard, buddy. It ain't the Ritz. One black coffee and one hot chocolate with extra cream. Now you're talking. Name's Neville Dutton. What's yours? Molly. Well, Molly, you, you live around here? Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. How old are you? Well, about eight. <laughs> I apologize. One never asks a lady her age. All right, drink up and then get yourself another sucker. Street kids, huh? Oh, he's after something. He's in every guy. What's that? Courage. It doesn't come in a bottle. All right, that's it, Smarty. Beat it. Go on, you heard me. You're bad for business. Hey. Scram. Free country. Oh, it is, huh? All you playboys think you know everything. Well, you can take your fancy car off my street. <laughs> You've got a surprise in your office. Something from Santa? Oh, what's up yourself, Jim? Merry Christmas, Joe. How's circulation? Improving, thank you. How's the eviction racket? <laughs> I'm just a peace officer doing the job. You're a regular credit to the force, Murphy. Joe, I came round to discuss the situation in Fennel Street. You've got the badge? Shoot. A little birdie tells me that uh, Frank Cobb and the boys are getting a rally going. If they do that, I'll uh, have to throw them all in jail. Not if they have a permit. Uh, that's highly unlikely in light of recent events. In light of some of my father's cash. Eh? <clears throat> Joe, I come here to ask you to help me keep a lid on it.
Uh, the dispatch is gospel on the south side. I mean, everyone down here uh, thinks you print the truth. <laughs> That's because I do. Fair enough, fair enough. But, Joe, sometimes the truth hurts. The big headlines will only make things worse now. Be quiet about these evictions, and you'll be doing everyone a favor. You're asking me to sit on the hottest news story around here since Prohibition. That's right. That's the only way these people are going to be able to move out peacefully. Oh, and while you're at it, Joe, cool down, Frank and the boys, will ya? I hate seeing people in jail at Christmas. Didn't know you were so chock full of the holiday spirit, Chief. Oh, well, let's just say, I, I, I keep an eye out for the public court. How good is homeless at Christmas? Don't get righteous, Joe. Think about it. Just don't think too long. I was talking to Mr. Farnley at the bank. He tells me you're having trouble making ends meet around here. Terribly conservative people, bankers. One smell of jail and they whip those loans back. <laughs> I'd hate to see the dispatch closed down. Especially with your lovely wife being in the family way. You can leave Mary Margaret out of it. Why don't you wise up and run with the winners? Why don't you crawl back in my father's pocket where you belong? Because I'm too big. Buying tickets to the policeman's ball? That Keystone just threatened to see me in jail if I don't keep quiet about Fennel Street. Well, that's one way to win a Pulitzer Prize. What do you got for me? 24 hours to move. Simon Legree couldn't have done it any better. No, I don't get it. My father may love the almighty dollar, but it's not his style to evict people illegally on Christmas Eve. It's his company, Joe. Who else could be calling the shots? We need an angle. Rich people picking on poor people. No, 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 no. It's Christmas. People are out buying fudge and, and ice skating. They're not going to sit still for a lecture. No. We need a grabber. An image. Uh, something that gets their attention and then tells the story. How about a face that says it all? You been talking to Willie Hurst? He should be this lucky. Take a look at that. Who in heaven's name is she? A match girl David found on the street. Nameless and homeless. What a face, huh? Rita, this is it. <clears throat> by tonight, everybody in Port City is going to be crying their eyes out over this little girl. And buying the dispatch. You better believe it. I want everybody to look at this picture. I want you to look at this little girl. She probably hasn't had a decent meal in weeks. But when I am through, everybody in this town is going to know this little girl. You don't throw people out of Christmas and live it down. I don't care who you are. Sweetheart. Like a house in a storybook. <laughs> hey, where do you meet Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear? Out we go. What a house. I'm, I'm forever, forever blowing bubbles. Morning, Master Neville. Shall I tell Edith to fix you the usual? Definitely. Molly, this is Bridges, the man who tolerates all of us. Nice to meet you. The pleasure, miss, is mine. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Baby bear. Morning, Lindsay. You're an early bird, catching any worms. 
Who's that? Her name is Molly. Where are the loved ones? In the library. Bonjour, ma famille. Molly, meet the mighty Duttons of Port City. How do you do? Hello, Molly. An explanation is in order, Neville. Well, Father, I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> I single-handedly saved this little orphan girl from a rabid donut vendor. Didn't I, sweetheart? Yes, sir. Well, now that you've rescued her, what do you plan to do? Keep her. Out of the question. But, Father, after all, I found her. Take her downstairs, give her a cup of milk, and let her run along. Honestly, you two. She's a little girl, not an alley cat. Come here, child. Do you have a home, Molly? Would you like to stay with us for a while? Sure. Mother! Francis, are you mad? It's the charitable thing to do, Haywood. Dutton House is not a foundling home. There are orphanages for this sort of thing. How do you know she isn't a runaway? Well, we don't. And there's no way of finding out until after the holidays, is there? Besides, every child deserves a Merry Christmas. Isn't that right, Molly? Yes, ma'am. All right, all right. Child can stay for a few days. But only until the proper authorities are notified. She's not coming to the party, is she? Oh, don't worry, Lindsay. She won't steal your dance car. You rang, sir. Bridges, would you take, uh, what's her name? Molly. <laughs> Molly, down to Edith. See that she's cared for and strictly supervised. I don't want her tramping about the house, getting into things. Yes, sir. Well, that's settled. If the office calls, I'll be in the billiard room. Bridges. Yes, madam. Ask Edith to look in the charity box for some clothes. I think Molly might fit into one of Lindsay's old middies. Certainly, madam. Come along, Molly. Thank you, Mrs. Dutton. You're a very nice lady. <laughs> She's a smooth little operator. Jealous? Oh, mm -hmm. you too, please, at your age. Well, Lindsay tries, Mother. But it's difficult to talk and suck your thumb at the same time. He didn't bat an eye at the price. He just pointed to the bird and said, wrap it up. Mr. Dutton loves the missus and doesn't think anything about turning people out of their homes. Oh, hush now, Fanula. I know you have people in Fennel Street, but if it wasn't for Mr. Dutton, you'd have been off the boat without a penny to your name. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, no. And would you rather have us cower like whipped puppies, Patrick, and not stand up for what's right? You're paid to work, Fanula. Save your politics for Sunday in the park. Well, who do we have here, Mr. Bridges? Her name's Molly. Take her and keep her busy. Tidy her up. She'll be staying for a few days. Is Mr. Neville's tray ready? I added a little hair of the dog. You could throw in the tail. I doubt it would help. Well, let's have a look at you. When was the last time you had a bath, dearie? It's been a long time. Peg, Fanula, give her a good scrubbing. And when you're finished, I'll fix her a nice bed. That's what we need. It's the busiest day of the year, and we're stuck babysitting Raggedy Ann. Oh, to be sure. You have your hands full with Peg and Fanula. What do you mean by that? Oh, don't play coy with me, Patrick. I see you floating away with the two of them. Now, one of these days, you're going to have to make a choice. 
and it may be sooner than you think. Jamie, I have a Santa Claus for you. Doctor told you to take it easy. I'm not a China doll, Joe. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> mm. You're frisky today. Something tells me you're on to a star. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whenever you're full of yourself, you get lovey dovey, and I get no sleep. Never marry an Irish girl, Jamie. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> What? What is it? Oh, the baby's got the hiccups, he's out. Hiccups? Now tell me, what's up? Oh, uh, David shot a great picture this morning. A, a little match girl that, that he found in Fennel Street, right in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody knows, and what is worse, nobody cares. But by tonight, I'm going to have everybody in Port City trying to get a roof over her head. Okay. I have a meeting that I have to get to down at the Carlos Grocery. Joe. Mary Margaret is important. And keeping your promise to your family isn't. It's Christmas Eve, Joe. Look, I am sorry, but I wasn't counting on my father pulling the rug out from under these people. If you really want to help, why don't you sit down with the man face to face instead of taking pot shots at him in the paper? He hasn't said a word to me in five years, Mary Margaret. What makes you think he's going to listen to me now? You're awfully hard on your father, Joe. Well, he's hard on me. I don't want to argue. Go if you have to. Just try and be back in time for supper. Now, you take care of your mom's port. the tree. You sure do have a lot of Christmas stuff? That's because I've seen a lot of Christmases. <laughs> we used to make such a fuss over the holidays. The children and I would spend months making ornaments. And then the minute December arrived, we'd start decorating the whole house. Red ribbons and pine boughs all up and down the banisters. Great big holly ball out in the entryway. There wasn't a nook or cranny that didn't have a Santa Claus or a candy cane in it. <laughs> wow. And Haywood and the boys would spend hours tramping over the hills looking for the perfect tree. Doesn't anybody help you decorate anymore? Oh, goodness, no. They're all too busy doing what they do. No, now I just call up the florist and... It's all done in about an hour. But I don't mind telling you, it's very nice having a little girl as a helper this year. What's this? This? This was Neville's first stocking. I made it myself. Believe it or not, Neville was a very sweet little boy. This is a pretty one. Mm. Now, this was Lindsay's when she was eight years old. She was very particular about the colors she wanted. Lindsay's always been very particular. Joe? Mm hmm. Who's Joe? Joe's my eldest son. Is he going to be at the party? No. Joe isn't allowed in the house. Did you do something wrong? Well, that's hard to say, really. You see, Haywood wouldn't allow Mary Margaret into the family. He said it was an inappropriate marriage for her, Dutton. Inappropriate? What does that mean? That means Protestant boys from Timber Hill don't marry Catholic girls from the South Side. That's silly. Hmm. 
I tried to reason with the two of them, but they wouldn't even speak to each other. I think the trouble really began when Joe turned his back on the business. You see, Haywood had such high hopes for him in the company, and when Joe decided to go his own way, I think it hurt Haywood more than he ever let on. Sounds like they're both pretty stubborn. You're a smart little girl. <laughs> I made this one four years ago. When I heard Mary Margaret and Joe were expecting, they had a baby boy, Jamie, after her father. It's silly, but I actually thought the baby might change things. Sweeney will be at the party tonight, Neville. That old scandal queen. Now listen to me. I am sick and tired of your escapades. I want you sober and civil tonight. Walter Churchfield will be here. And while I'm with him... Don't tell me you're gonna try and sell him that Fennel Street dump over cookies and eggnog. This isn't a game, Neville. If Churchfield signs on the dotted line, it'll mean hundreds of thousands. Don't we already have thousands of thousands? I cannot afford any incidents. I want my family spotless, understand? Don't worry, Father. I'll wash behind the ears. Good. I'm glad we understand each other. Tell your mother I'll be in the billiard room. Hmm? Dutton up there. I know. He said he wasn't going to make any trouble. <laughs> this is America, Donnelly. There is no law against stupidity. Now, uh, here with Dutton's bound to find out. I know he will. Because I'm the one that's going to tell him. Help, Sam. It's hard on all the rest of us. Thank you very much, sir. I'd like you to help me butter up Walter Churchfield this evening. You think he's really interested in Fennel Street? It's good income property at a fair price. He'd be a fool to pass it by. What about your tenants? I gave them 60 days' notice on the first. They can either move out or take their chances with the new landlord. The local precinct chief is keeping an eye on things for me. So far, so good. Murphy tells me that everything seems to be running smoothly. It's not the way the dispatch paints it. The dispatch paints everything yellow. You should know that by now, Sam. A few renters have made appeals. It's nothing to worry about. The property's mine. I have a right to sell it. 
There's a telephone call for you, sir. Excuse me. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Dutton, but you told me to let you know if there was any trouble down Fenn Street. What? But I gave them fair notice. We're within our legal rights, don't they understand? Well, they're simple people, sir. Uh, they believe what they read in the papers, if you catch my drift. Yeah, I'm afraid so, sir. Joe's been pretty hard line lately, and uh, now he's out on the street with them. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, I saw him with my own eyes. Yeah, well, before I take any action, I, 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 I thought I'd chat with you, sir. Being as how he's your son, and, uh, and it's the holidays and everything, I, I might go easy on him. Well, I appreciate your offer, Murphy. But if he's determined to stir up trouble, then you have no choice. Do your duty. You heard me. If my son has no respect for his family, then maybe spending a night in jail will teach him some respect for law and order. Chief. Nobody around here has filed any complaints. Nobody around here owns the street. Public street. My father's having me arrested. He said a night in jail might do you some good. And if you don't put that hammer down, I'll throw in assaulting an officer. Those charges won't stick and you know it. I've got too many witnesses. Call off this rally. Shut your presses. There's no need for this to go any further. Forget it. Don't leave it. Murphy. His wife's gonna have the baby any minute. Don't put him away now. She needs a spirit. You should have thought about that this morning. Book him down, Lee. Press for sin. And assault. Tell my father he's not gonna get away with us. He already has. This rally is over. I give you one hour to clear this street. Anyone left grumbling? It's the Christmas pie in jail. Molly, why don't you go and get the Christmas logs for the fire? And we'll take them up to the missus in a minute. Mr. Bridges wasn't too happy when he found me upstairs. Well, never you mind about Mr. Bridges. He's not the only one who gives the orders around here. Now, run along, child. Dutton House, this is Edith. Speak up. You sound like you're in a pickle barrel. Mary and Joseph. Joe's in jail. Come along, child. Oh, there you are, Edith. Would you tell Bridges I think the milkman has overcharged us again? Yes, ma'am. Molly, put the logs in the fireplace. What is it, Edith? Nothing gone wrong with the dinner, I hope. No, ma'am. It's Joe. Joe? He's in jail, ma'am. Something about Fennel Street. And Mary Margaret? The baby could come any time. They're poor as mice, and her family has nothing. How will she ever get him out of jail? There must be something I can do. But you tried before, ma'am, and Joe's turned it all away. Don't dare to 
think what Mr. Dutton would do if he ever found out. I know, Edith, but I can't just sit idly by and let them lock my son up like some drunken sailor. Edith, tell Patrick to bring the car around. Oh, you're not going down to the station, ma'am, in broad daylight. Somebody might see you. No one will see me. Don't worry. Get your coat. We haven't much time. But the dinner, ma'am. Th there's a million things to do still. And Bridges would suspect something's up if I left the pudding to Peg and Fanula. Molly, can you keep a secret? Yes, ma'am. Good, because you're coming with me. The cabin I left Kovitz and make it snappy. I got to get home here. Let's go. Keep it down. How's Mary Margaret? I don't know. I ran down here as soon as I heard. Tell her I'm fine, David. Don't let her get upset about this. And make sure she's not alone tonight. Don't worry, I'll check on her when I get back. I sure picked a swell time to get locked up. Hey, you're not gonna miss the baby. We'll get you out of here. We already started raising your bail. I had no idea you were such an expensive guy. If anything happens to Mary Margaret while I'm in here, I swear my father's gonna pay. I want that little girl's picture on the front page tonight, you understand? I want a big story on Fennel Street, and I want everybody in town to know that Haywood Dutton threw his own son in jail. You got that? You got it, Joe. Relax. I'll take care of everything. You just enjoy the fine dining in here. Tell Mary Margaret I love her. Neville, have you seen my blue handbag? What are you doing? Smell that, Lindsay. That's Christmas. Go upstairs and get dressed, for God's sake. Where's Mother? It's late. She promised to do my hair for the party. Is this what you're after? Give me that! It clashes. One compact, one change purse, an old ballet ticket, one lipstick, petal pink, Something that looks like a stale lozenge and a white lace hanky. Where are my lemon drops? Mm. You're impossible. Somebody has to be. This is where John is. Eat this, Jamie, then we'll go visit Rita downstairs at the newspaper. Coming. Hello, Mary Margaret. Um, may we come in? so much like Joe. That's what everyone says. Yeah, Jamie, say hello to your grandma, Francis. <gasps> oh, Jamie. If your grandpa Haywood could see you, this whole nasty mess would be over in an instant. Would you like some tea? No, there isn't time. Uh. Mary Margaret, Joe's been arrested. What? Yes, I brought the money for his bail. The car's waiting outside to take us to the station. I appreciate what you're doing, Mrs. Dutton. But I can't take the money. Joe would never forgive me. Dear, don't you think Joe would rather be home tonight with you and the baby? Yes, but... Mary Margaret, there comes a time when a wife has to... turn a blind eye to her husband's pride and do what's best for her family. If I thought for one instant about Haywood at a time like this, I wouldn't be here. Mm. 
You're right. Thank you. Oh, are we taking Jamie with us? Good heavens, Jamie. I almost forgot. It's time for him to eat. Molly, do you think you could take care of Jamie? We'll just be gone a short while. I'm a good babysitter. I can take care of him until you get back. Thank you, Molly. It isn't very far. We won't be gone long. His applesauce is right here. His toys are in the living room in the cupboard. If you need anything, you just go down to the newspaper and ask for Rita. Understand? Yes. Be a good boy. Mommy won't be long. Mom, mom, mom. <laughs> Got any crayons? Bridges, do you think we should contact the authorities? I'm sure Mrs. Dutton is just delayed downtown with some last-minute shopping, sir. Don't worry, Daddy. I'll be your hostess. Did you lay out my clothes, Bridges? Everything is ready for you, sir. Oh, not there, Peg. On the table. I want to take the mints downstairs. Peg, where are you going with the mints? Miss Lindsay wants them removed, sir. But we always have mints at Christmas. Well, this year, we're having bonbons, Neville. And by the way, guests will be here in less than two hours. Think about dressing, would you? Looks like the dinghy's taking over the harbor, Bridges. What's this? <laughs> right. They get around. If somebody's in trouble anywhere in the whole world, they just hop on a shooting star and slide right down from heaven. Whoosh, like that. And you go, good. You're a pretty smart kid, Jamie. It's the rest of your family I'm worried about. Did you like meeting your grandma Frances? She's a nice lady. Too bad your dad and your grandpa are mad at each other. I think it really makes her sad. I wish there was a way we could fix things. Grandpa. Grandpa, that's it. We'll do what your grandma said. We'll take you to see your grandpa. Just kidnap you, kiddo. I know. Tracy, you ready with that little girl's plate yet? You bet. Good. Joe wants her face front and center. Anything in on her? Nothing. She came out of nowhere and she went right back again. That kid is a real mystery. Oh, Mary Margaret, I almost forgot. How's the kitty? Two dollars and twenty cents. At this rate, we won't get Joe out of jail till Easter. You know, I tried up there earlier. No answer. Right. You better go check on her. Tell her Joe's in jail and he loves her, okay? How cute you are. We can't go running off all half cut. Murphy's not playing fair. Why should we? Come on, Jamie. Into the box. Uh, uh. That's right. He's up to something no good and he threw Joe in the slammer to keep him quiet. I see. We march down to that jail and blast the boy out. Listen to Al Capone here. You got any better ideas? Yeah! You two start raising some bail money. I'm gonna 
Let's talk to Rita down at the dispatch. See, Murphy may have us cornered in Southside, but I dare him to chase us up Timber Hill. I told you, you're too late, Frank. You've got to put it in tonight's paper, David. Candlelight parade to Dutton House. What's this? We're taking the rally straight to Haywood Dutton's front door. Sorry, Frank. It's inciting to riot. We could be shut down. Oh, come on, Rita. It's two birds with one stone. We can't just let them toss us out of our homes like garbage. And what better place to pass the hat for Joe? Are you nuts? It's Christmas Eve, Frank. The Duttons are having their big bash. Anybody who's anybody's up there tonight. Do you really think that you're going to march on Timber Hill with a bunch of Southsiders and get away with it? Besides, we're already sprinting. Oh, that's going be damn. Joe would do it for us. Why would you do it for him? I am doing the best I can, damn it. Miss Rita, nobody knows where Mary Margaret is. She could be off trying to raise money for Joe by herself. I don't know. Our kitty is up to a whopping $3, and that's not enough to spring a puppy from a pound. But Frank's got a point. If we don't think of something fast, Joe could be locked up for a long time. Okay, okay, scratch everything. We got a new front page. That little girl's picture, Joe behind bars, and Frank's parade. And if we are shut down, Cobb, I am personally moving this entire paper to the grocery store. You got a deal. Oh, and David, tell Tracy to print flyers, too. I want every newsboy on every corner to get 100 each. Everybody hears about this parade, whether they buy the dispatch or not. Are you happy? Very. Tell me, Edith, do you know where Mrs. Dutton is? I'm sure I couldn't say. Edith, tell me, Mr. Dutton has a right to know. Out of my way, Winslow Bridges, if you know what's good for you. Bradway's a mess with Patrick on. Where can they be? Has nobody called the police or the hospital? Is that a trace of concern for young Patrick I hear in your voice? I don't give a fig whether he lives or dies, and you can tell him I said so. You've got more pride than sense, Joe Dutton. I won't do it, Mary Margaret. I won't use my father's money to get me out of jail. If you thought about us as much as you think about your father, you wouldn't be in this mess. I'm sorry, Joe. I just can't understand. I believe in you, but I just don't see why you want to play the martyr behind bars when you've got a chance to get out and do some good. Are you all right? No, I'm not. The baby's been kicking. I'm tired to the bone. Jamie is at home waiting for me, and you're driving me crazy. Yes, ma'am, I... I can sympathize. Hey, it'll be all right. Just get me out of here. I can't leave my China doll all alone on Christmas Eve, can I? Neville, why do you always have to be so inappropriate? Well, it's my specialty. Don't answer it, Bridges. We can't let anyone until Mother gets back. Well, we can't leave the mystery guests freezing outside. Bridges! How do we explain Mother? We say she eloped with St. Nick. Somebody answer the door. Daddy, what are we going to say about Mother? Thank you, Bridges. Ah, Greta. Oh, yes, Lindsay, yes. kids, don't you look smashing. Oh, and Neville. Be still my heart. We should be so lucky. Merry Christmas, Greta. Heywood, darling. I hope you don't mind my coming a little early to the party. But I told Francis I like to capture the ambience of a party before the revelers arrive. Well? Get the parlor, get the tree, get the table. We'll get the family on the staircase later. Yes, ma'am. And, uh... 
Where is our Francis? Still primping upstairs. Her sister, uh, Romaine, uh, <clears throat> took a turn for the worse, I'm afraid. She had to dash up to uh, New Haven this afternoon. Uh, this is the first time Francis will have missed the Christmas party, but it's family, you understand. Oh, of course. How tragic for you. Yes, well. Uh, shall we have some punch? Uh, Romaine! Now what are we going to do if Mother comes back? I never heard of a sister roommate. Courage, sis. High society is a jungle. That's correct. Joe's wife stood out the back. Yes, sir. Did she bring cash? More than enough. This is for the senior precinct officer. had the nerve to lock up my son. The police? Who else? They've got the keys. Merry Christmas, Mr. Joe. Merry Christmas, Mr. Patrick. Well, I'd better hurry now. I I'm late as it is. Half the town must be at the party by now. Mom. Thank you. Joe. You know we all miss you terribly. Well, say hello to Neville and Lindsay. We're having an open house all day tomorrow if they want to stop by. Oh, I think they'd like that very much. Well, you better uh, get on home now to that beautiful baby boy. Send Molly back in the taxi. Edith, I still dream about her plum pudding. Glad you could come. Where's your man out there, Dutton? We had to park on the street. Bridges, where on earth is Patrick? Find him and see to the parking at once. Yeah, immediately, sir. I'm afraid there's an urgent telephone call regarding Mrs. Dutton's sister, Romain, sir. I see. Uh, excuse me, Churchfield. I'll only be a moment. Yeah, this way, madam. This way, sir. Yes, Murphy. What? Don't worry, Jesus. I don't know where we're 
Dinner bell's going to ring in a minute, and the bird hasn't even set yet. Oh, pray to God they don't notice. Patrick, Mrs. Dutton. Oh, thank heavens you're safe. How is Joe? Mrs. your cooking. Has dinner started yet? No, ma'am, but it's almost time. Mr. Dutton, beside himself. Patrick, where on earth have you been? I'll tell you later. Under the mistletoe. <laughs> Francis. Oh, hey, Ma. Hello, dear. I'm so sorry. I'm, um, but I'm going to go change and be done in just a moment. Just like that. No explanation. Not only have you embarrassed me by not being here to receive our guests, but you ran to the police station like a Skid Row bail bondsman. Who told you I was at the police station? That's beside the point. I want to know. The police chief called me himself. Are you satisfied? Now, every cop on the beat knows that my wife got Joe out of jail. You had Joe arrested. Francis. You had our son thrown into jail. It was his own doing. Look, we'll discuss this later. Go change your clothes. I'll tell everyone that your sister, Romaine, has had a remarkable recovery. Dinner will be in a minute. If you think I'm going to sit by your side and sip consomme like a dutiful wife after what you've done to Joe, you are sadly mistaken. Francis. I have nothing more to say to you. Francis. Open the door. Francis. Hey, what a darling. Is that you? Hello, Greta. I thought I heard shouting. Well, ah, shall we go down to dinner? <laughs> Molly, Jamie. We're home. Jamie. Jamie. Molly! Jamie! Jamie! Get out of the garage, are you, sport? Joe? Where are they? Oh, wait. Don't worry. Uh, Rita probably just took them downstairs to the office. Wait! What is it? They could freeze out in weather like this. I'll go after them. Maybe I can catch them before they get to Dutton House. Or, if I have to, I will walk right into the party and ask my father politely if he's seen my son. I love you. Let's go. Whoa, where are you going? With you. Please, Joe. Okay, let's go. Dinner is served, sir. Oh, I'm famished. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, may I grab the old Oh, I haven't even introduced you. Oh. Greta, this is Freddie Walton, Greta Sweeney. What? Your wife sets a swell table, Dutton. Francis will be very glad you approve. Please. Thank you, Chris. Neville, you remember Freddie Walton? <laughs> Another triumph for your dear mother. I've always said she's the best hostess in town. It's such a shame that Francis can't be here. Oh, she's here, Greta. In spirit. Pass the nut bread, will you? Come on, 
Jimmy. I'll help you out. I know it's cold out here. I have something to make you feel better. There's a big fire in a marble fireplace. It'll warm you right up. Don't get too close now. I asked for a place around your fire, but three on a match is bad luck. <laughs> We're lost. Join the club. I missed my bus. Where are you two supposed to be? Timber Hill. Oh, you really are lost. <laughs> this is Timber Hill, honey. We're looking for the Dutton House. Do you know where that is? Sure do. I'll take you there. It's, it's right on my way. It's about a 20-minute walk. We'll have to go real slow, though. These boots are killing me. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 came all the way here to get their homes back, Joe, and to get you out of jail. Come on, say a few words to the cops. I can't do that. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry, but I came here to pick up my son, and that is it. Sure, he's safe and sound now. He doesn't give a damn about anybody else. It's true. Nah, forget it. How'd you get out? My mother bailed me out, and it took a lot of nerve for her to do it. She's having her Christmas party in there, Dave, but I don't want to ruin it by using her, her front porch as a soapbox. Hey, listen, Joe. You aren't the only reason these people came up here. Tomorrow, half of them are going to lose the roof over their heads. Just get up there, make a quick speech, and send them home with a little hope. You think it'll work? <laughs> Murphy didn't have you arrested for nothing. These people would follow you off a cliff. You tell them what to do, they'll do it. All right. I want to thank you all for coming out here tonight. You came because a neighbor was in trouble. But it's you, the people of Fennel Street, that are in real need. Let's get you back your home. What's going on out there, Doctor? I don't know, but I'm going to put a stop to it. Please, uh, don't allow the noise to spoil your meal. It seems there are some people outside who have their holidays confused. They think this is Halloween instead of Christmas. <laughs> the fight is not over yet! It's going to take time 
and it's going to take money. So we're going to pass the hat. Dig deep in your pockets and be generous. It means shelter and food for everybody. They're making all that noise. Joe. That's uh, J O E, Greta. It's been five years since he set foot in this house. If I were you, I'd clear out quick before the walls come tumbling down. Looks like they mean business, sir. Yes, well, see to the guests. I'm going to call the police. I don't care if you have to call out the Marines, Murphy. I want those people out of my front yard immediately. Well, see that you do it. Hello, Mr. Dutton. How did you get in here? Jamie, say hello to your grandpa. Jamie? Joe's boy. Doesn't he look just like him? Who told you to bring him in here? Nobody. Don't lie to me, little girl. My son put you up to this, didn't he? The same man who has turned those people out there against me. Joe sure didn't do anything. Those people outside are mad because you're making them move on Christmas Eve. I'm doing no such thing. You are, too. Murphy said so. That's ridiculous. He told everybody on Fiddle Street the landlord wanted them out in 24 hours. Do I look like the kind of man that would evict people at Christmas? Told Murphy to keep an eye on things, that's all. I wanted everything done legally and properly. Well, he did everything wrong. And now all those people outside think you're a bad man. And he threw Joe in jail, too, just to keep him quiet about it. Are you telling me that the police chief of the South Side is a crook? Yes, sir. He has been fooling you. If you don't believe me, talk to Joe. I'll do no such thing. Now, stop pestering me, for God's sakes. Out, the both of you. Come on. Let's go. Out. No, 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 don't touch that. That's not for you. It's a for coat for my wife. Your grandmother. Well, okay, now run along, or Santa won't be good to you. doesn't want a fur coat for Christmas. She just wants you and Joe to get back together again. Who told you that? She did. Come on, Jamie. Why don't you go back into the dining room, Master Neville? Nonsense, Bridget. This is the best seat in the house. Molly, what on earth are you doing up here? Sweetheart, where you been? You're just in time for dessert. Who's this little shortstop? Bridges, take these children back to their friends in the street. You can't turn them over to that mob. They'll be trampled on like little ducks. Don't interfere, Neville. Don't worry, me and Jamie will be all right. My God. Is this Jamie? Is this Joe's Jamie? Bridges, look, it's Joe's boy. Daddy, he was keeping you. We're waiting to start the pudding. Look, sis, it's Joe's baby boy. Bridges, will you get those children out of here? Yes, sir. Come, Lindsay, we have dinner guests. Can't stand the sight of him, can you? He looks too much like Joe. 
You're drunk, Neville. Not this time. You know, Father, sometimes you're remarkably unperceptive about me. Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't blame you. I'm a washout of a son compared to Joe. Always have been. It's God's cruel joke, fathers and sons, huh? They're either so much alike, they lock horns from day one, or they're so completely different, they just never hit it off. And the capper is, old Haywood Dutton got himself one of each. <laughs> Daddy! Neville, don't be a fool. Along. You come along or you step aside, Patrick. It's up to you. Patrick, you're not going. It could mean your job. I'm sorry, Peg. Cheer up, Peg. There'll be others. Thank you, Ella. Charlie, what do you got? There's the bomb that's silent, Federal Street! Get him! Get him! Get him! Oh! Mary Margaret! Wait, wait, listen to me! This isn't the way! Bridges, under no circumstances is anyone to open the front door. Do you understand? Oh, perfectly. You have to trust me. Rita, the baby. Violence. Somebody get Joe. She's having here. the baby. Please trust. Violence will get us nowhere. We have to stay calm. Joe. No. It's Mary Margaret. She's having the baby. Oh my God. You never get to the hospital in this crowd. Doctor Easton's at the party, Joe. <laughs> Oh, 
darling, it's just too exciting. There's a woman outside in labor. Greta, shut up. Who's out on the porch? I'll see. It's Mary Margaret. Just get closer. Maybe we could help. You be careful up there, darling. Okay. Don't you worry. I'll get you a doctor if I have to break the door down. She took a fall, Joe. I'm worried. Open the door, damn it! If you won't let us in, send Dr. Ethan out for God's sake! Don't worry. It'll be all right, Mary Mark. Edith, get some hot water and clean linen. We can put her in the den. That won't be necessary, Edith. Hey, Wood, it's our duty. Open the door. It's your duty, Sam. If you want to help that woman, take some blankets and go outside. But, Daddy, we could put her downstairs at least. Be quiet, Lindsay. No one out there sets foot in this house, and that's final. Now, it's not my fault that the woman came tramping out in the snow. Daddy, you're not serious. Hey, Wood, hey, Wood. The evening's taken its toll. It's understandable. You're just upset. I'm not upset. I'm sick and tired of people telling me what to do in my own house. Mrs. Dutton. Mother. Everything's going to be all right, Mary Margaret. Oh, Sam, can you help me get her inside? Here, get on. It's a face art. Well, then, let's tip the odds in favor of our boy. Everybody's candle should be lit, Mr. Kennelly. What the? Don't I know you from someplace? Back into the house, sir. No, Bridges. Joe, I didn't realize. Mary Margaret. I'm sorry, Joe. I've been wrong about so many things. Please, forgive me. I'm sorry too, Dad.
What about my friends? Oh, they're welcome, too. Everybody's welcome. What about Fiddle Street? I'm not going to sell. <laughs> Everybody, you're all invited to the party. And Merry Christmas! I can explain everything. Save your lies for the judge, Murphy. I've no time for them. My daughter-in-law is having her baby in the den, and I don't want to miss it. So kindly get this jalopy out of my driveway, or I will feed you to those people inside. Drive, you stupid! Churchfield, the deal's off. I won't forget this duck. This time, Kennedy, I wouldn't blame Haywood Dutton if he was to lock you up for good. I swear, I don't remember a thing except that little girl lighting my candle. It's been quite a day, huh, JB? Presence. Jamie, what are you doing here all by yourself? Where's Molly? Merry Christmas, Molly. 